boot Ubiquity and just need a little bit of help getting things set up, or maybe you're thinking about put, building a Ubiquity network in your home and don't know where to get started, guys, I've created something just for you. I've just released an eight-part video series that is designed for the Unify newbie. Now, in this series, we're going to cover the ins and outs of building a great Unify network and Unify Protect camera system, a blueprint of sorts. So if this is you, stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to Ethernet Blueprint. My name is Tim Trich. Now, I know firsthand that when you're moving to a network like this, it can be extremely intimidating. There are just a ton of things to consider, and let's not forget that every one of our houses comes with its own challenges that are unique to our situation. So in light of that, I've decided to release a video series, an eight-part video series that is designed for the Unify newbie. This is designed to help anyone out there be able to get a Unify network and Unify Protect system um, up and running. And because I don't want you to have to wait for all the videos to come out, I've decided to release them all at the same time. So if you're on my YouTube page, just look for this logo to get into the series. Let's get started. Now, this first video is going to be dedicated to the different parts of it and components of a Unified Network and how they all connect together. But before we get into that, I'd like to start out with a question. Who is a Unified Network even for? And it's a good question because not everybody is looking for all the features and aspects of a Unified Network that really set it apart from a general router or mesh system that you could just pick up at your local store. Now, one of the big differences is, is his ability to be able to create VLANs or virtual networks, which we'll talk about later in the video series. By incorporating a VLAN or VLANs into your network, it gives you the ability to sort of separate your traffic, which can make things run a little bit smoother. In addition to that, it also gives you the ability to add a layer of security and really define how your devices can talk to each other to protect your home network. Okay, so I know this sounds complicated, but let me paint you just a little picture to kind of help you understand what I'm talking about here, okay? So one setup that Unify users universally love is being able to create an IoT VLAN or an IoT network. Now, now this is something that we're gonna cover and build as part of this video series, okay? Now, IoT, stands for Internet of Things, and it includes a ton of devices that we have in our home. Things like smart lighting, smart appliances, smart devices, smart blinds, um, home assistants like Alexa or Google Home, the list just really goes on and on. Now, these devices have been created to make our lives easier, our home smarter, and they pretty much give us an app to run everything. However, Many of these types of devices are not considered very secure and could introduce security vulnerabilities in your home, which is never a good thing, right? So if you're using a standard router, something like what your ISP gave you or a mesh system that you picked up at your local store, this means that all of those unsecure devices or less secure devices are able to actively communicate with devices in your home that you're hoping to keep more secure. This would be like your laptop that you do your online banking on. So unfortunately, what that means is this could allow an attacker to gain access to some of your private information. However, when you incorporate VLANs into your setup, you're creating separation of your network traffic. So you're able to put your more secure devices on one network or VLAN, and you're able to put your IoT or less secure devices on their own network or VLAN. And this not only allows your devices to communicate more efficiently because they kind of have their own little lane in the highway, but when you add firewall rules, something I'm also gonna do in this series for you guys, you get to add a layer of security to those devices that you want to protect. So this, basically means you get the benefits of having smart home devices in your home, but in a more secure manner, which is a good thing. 
All right, so let's go back to our question. Who is a unified network really for? And I'm gonna answer the question this way. There are a lot of ways that I feel this question can be answered, but this is the way I'm gonna answer it. A unified network is for anybody who doesn't want the status quo in a network. They're looking for something that's a little more robust, a little more secure, and they like the idea of being able to set it up specifically to meet their personal needs. They like that flexibility and that control. Now, I didn't talk about this, but it's also built towards anyone who has either has physical cabling in their home already or can install network cabling in their home, something like Cat5, Cat6, even Cat7, right? This means it's a great option for anybody who's building a home, which is pretty much what my YouTube channel is all about. Okay, so now that we have that covered and out of the way, I wanna go over the components of a Unify network. These are the pieces of equipment, the parts of the network that you're gonna to need to buy in order to put together a Ubiquity network, okay? Now, the first one is a controller. So we're talking the ones at the top of the page here, okay? Now, the controller is really important. Its job is to manage all of the equipment on your network. So basically, when you open the Unify app on your phone or you browse to Unify URL on your computer, you're actually connecting to your network controller. And it's gonna do a lot of things for you, okay? It's gonna allow you to see your equipment. This is like your, your physical Unify equipment and manage those devices. It's gonna allow you to see your connected devices like your clients, all the wire stuff that's connected wirelessly. And it's also where all of your configuration changes are made in the system, okay? Now, Unify or Ubiquity gives you multiple options for deploying a controller in your home network, okay? You can download and install controller software and install it on a computer that's always running in your home, okay? And this is 100% free. They have a Windows version, Mac version, and a Linux version. So if that excites you, then just know you can go to the Ubiquity's website and download that software for free. Um, you could use a hosting service and run your controller in the cloud. This is very popular with MSPs who manage multiple people's networks. Maybe as part of this setup, you're managing your home network and maybe your parents' network or something, and this might be a good option for you. But you can have it hosted in the cloud. That usually comes at a cost, though, okay? There's a cost associated, a monthly cost. Um, you could buy a network cloud key, which is the device kind of at the top right of the screen there. So this is a network device that has the controller software running on it. So it's kind of like just plugging in a controller that runs on the network. However, probably the most popular option, the one we typically recommend when getting started or looking is to choose from one of their many gateways or routers that actually have the controller built into it as part of it. So you're kind of knocking out two birds with one stone. However, no matter which way you decide to go, you will need a network controller to get the best from your Unify network. It's very, very um, good to have on your network. Now, the second device you're gonna need is a router or gateway. So we're going down to the next set of lines here. Again, lots of options. Now, these devices are responsible for the routing of your network traffic and enforcing the security you have placed on your network, okay? Now, Ubiquity has a lot to choose from. Some of the options will require an external controller, a separate device running the controller software like I talked about earlier, like your computer or a cloud key, while others, actually have the controller built into them, like I mentioned. And really for the home user, I think this is your best option. It kind of kills two birds with one stone. So if you're interested in looking at specifically Unify routers that have the controller built into them, check out this video I did where I really went over all the different options and kind of talked about the differences so anybody could kind of make the decision based off what was best for them. Next on the list is your network switch. We're going down. Okay, so your switch is what takes that network and distributes it across your home, right? So it's, it's distributing it to your other network devices. It's, con it's distributing it to your clients or the devices connected to your network. It's what distributes it across the home. So all of your Unify devices, your APs and whatnot, will and probably some of your clients will actually physically connect to your switch so they can get online. The access points are plugged in as well as maybe your TVs or something, right? So this is so they'll have a physical Cat6 cable plugged into them. The remainder of your devices will connect wirelessly, okay? So 
When choosing the size of your switch, you're really basing this on two major factors. The first one is how many ports you're gonna need. And the second one is how much power it needs to deliver PoE to your power over ethernet devices. Okay, and we're gonna cover this in a little bit more detail in just a moment. However, if you're interested in learning how to choose a network switch, check out this video I did that goes and takes a deeper dive into all of this and really breaks it down. The whole video is about choosing a network switch and how to shop for one and how to get one that's gonna work best for you. All right, the next thing we're looking at is access points. Now these are the devices they are physically connected to your network with the ethernet wire and they are gonna broadcast your wireless networks so your Wi-Fi clients, things that don't physically plug in, can connect to the network. So the number of access points you need will really be determined by the amount of space you're gonna need coverage for, how big your home is, right? And there are a lot of different types of access points and a lot of different mounting options. There's ceiling mounted, wall mounted, indoor, outdoor rated, there's Wi-Fi 5 or AC, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, and now even Wi-Fi 7, each kind of bring in a different level of coverage and features to your home. If you're interested, I also have a whole video dedicated to Wi-Fi planning that you should check out, and it's gonna show you how to actually heat map your home so you can kind of design the Wi-Fi in your home, all right? Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about, it's kind of part of this bottom section here, is um, your security cameras, okay? Like many cameras today, Ubiquiti cameras, or Unified Protect cameras, are connected with a network cable. They're going to require that some kind of PoE power that we talked about to power them. So they're gonna physically plug in, they're gonna get their power and their network connectivity from a wire that has PoE on the other end. And you're also gonna need some kind of NVR or network video recorder on the network to store your recordings to. Now, Ubiquiti calls their camera system Unify Protect. And like its network devices, it also too gives you a bunch of camera options to choose from. So those are the components that make up your network. And these are the pieces you're gonna to need to kind of figure out what you're gonna, what you're gonna to need to buy when putting this together, but we're gonna talk about how you can do that, and then those other videos I mentioned are there to really kinda of help you put this all together. Okay, so as you can see, here lies some of the problems with choosing a network like this. I mean, already we're in video one, and you're already having to make some choices on the components and pieces of this thing that you're gonna to have to use, and you're probably gonna to have to do some research as to what is going to work out best in your home so it can get a little bit complicated now in order to help with this at the end of this video or after we get past this next part i'm going to make some general recommendations for routers and gateways switches access points and cameras for you guys to help you kind of at least have a starting point these are just general recommendations but these are equipment that i set up all the time and i generally have very good luck with them they may not apply to your situation in every case, but at least it'll give you a starting point because when you go onto the Ubiquiti website, which we're gonna do next video, you're gonna see there's a lot to choose from. But I want to at least give you that starting point to kind of help you with your planning. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different components and pieces that make up a Unify network, I wanna talk just a little bit about how these devices all connect together, all right? so. As you can see on the diagram here, I've kind of outlined in general how a network like this is set up in a home, okay? And we're just gonna kind of work at the top and work our way, or start at the top and work our way down, all right? So the first thing you have is your internet connection, okay? This is gonna be the device provided by your ISP. Um, sometimes it's just a modem. Sometimes it's a modem router combo. Sometimes it's a fiber transceiver that they give you a, a cable that you can just connect directly to that. It just kind of depends what your ISP is using. Starlink, for example, has their Starlink router that you have to have a little special adapter to to connect it into anything behind it. So it just depends on who your ISP is. It will really determine what part you'll have. But this is basically how you're getting to the internet, right? This is 
you're going through the ISP or the modem to get out to the internet. Now, the modem or ISP device is physically connected into a WAN port or wide area network, a WAN port on your gateway or router. Okay, so there's a cable physically connecting those two devices together and the, and the modem will connect to the WAN port specifically on your router. And, and depending which router, sometimes they have one, sometimes they have multiple. It just kind of depends um, on the device you choose for your router or gateway, okay? Then also on your router or gateway, you're going to have at least one, sometimes more. In this case, there's actually eight or nine um, LAN ports. That's local area network. So think of WAN like your internet side. It's the internet side and your LAN is all the devices in your house, the local network, the local area network, okay? So your router or gateway, again, may only have one port on it on the LAN or it may have multiple depending on which one you choose, but that LAN port is going to connect to your switch. Now a switch, is all LAN ports. Everything in there is a LAN port. It is a LAN device, okay? There's no WAN ports. It cannot route traffic to the internet, except for special cases where you have layer three switches, but we're not gonna get into that. We're keeping things very, very basic. The switches we're talking about, in general, we're gonna use as LAN or local area network devices. So you can really plug in any port on them and it will work. And you're gonna plug from your LAN port or your gateway to one of the LAN ports on your switch, okay? So now we're going from the modem to the router and then down to the switch, physically connected. These are physical cables, okay? Now, depending on what size of switch you choose, you're gonna have a certain number of ports to choose from. Some of you may have very small needs and you only have an eight port switch. That means you can plug in eight devices to that switch and they will be able to get access to the network, okay? So the example here, we have a 16 port switch and off of that, we have physically connected our network devices. There is uh, unified protect cameras. There are access points or APs, sometimes called WAPs. A lot of people call them WAPs. Um, wireless access point is what that stands for. And then we have a dome camera in here, but those devices are physically connected. Now, Every one of the devices shown here in that picture, the, both the cameras and the three middle access points, the white devices, they are powered by PoE, power over ethernet. So not only are they getting their network connection from the switch, but they are also getting their power from the switch. No need to have separate power to get these devices online. They get both their power and their network connectivity from your switch. So this is a PoE switch and it has enough power to be able to power all five of these devices, okay? Now, in addition to our network devices, cameras and access points, we might have a couple other devices physically connected. If you follow me on my channel, you know I for sure like to connect gaming boxes, if you can, to a physical network, and your entertainment, your TV, your streaming. I think it should be connected with a physical wire. So, you might have 10 TVs or five TVs or one TV, it just kind of depends but I wanted to show you some examples that there would be other devices potentially physically connected into the switch to get online. This TV and this Xbox in this picture are not connected to the Wi-Fi. They are physically connected with a cable, okay? Now, your access points are gonna broadcast your Wi-Fi names and then your devices that are Wi-Fi only, like your cell phone, or maybe you have an Echo, whatever, that don't have a cable, a way to plug into a cable, they're gonna connect to your Wi-Fi. That's how they get online, okay? and it, everything is routed and handled in your router slash gateway and everything is controlled by your controller, okay? So this is how these will physically connect together. Now, as we look at this, I want you to kind of think about one more thing, depending on where you are in your process, right? Maybe you're building a house and this is research or maybe your house is already done, but typically your ISP modem, okay? Your, your router gateway and your switch are kept in the same area in your home, okay? I call this the network head end. This is where 
This is kind of like the head end, the power pack that's running your network. Because they just all connect to each other, they're typically in the same spot in your home, whether that's in your office, maybe it's in your basement if you have basements, but they're typically all in the same place. I call this the network head end, okay? And so think about where you would put this equipment in your home. Maybe it's already done for you and the wires already ran and you don't have any choice in the matter, but if you're building a home, you have a choice in the matter. And so you gotta be thinking about the equipment that's physically gonna sit there and you might have some additional equipment like Sonos amplifiers. Maybe you have a uh, camera NVR that's separate from Ubiquiti, your own uh, different brand or something. So you got to know kind of what's all going to be in this location. But for sure, your modem or ISP device, your router and your switch are, okay? And then your cameras are on the outside of your house. Your access points are deployed on your ceiling or maybe outdoors or whatever. And then your TVs are where you're at. And they're going to be connected to cables that are run through your walls in your house. But everything is going to run back and connect to that switch, okay? And then from the switch, it distributes the network everywhere else. So you want to be thinking, especially if you're in the design phase, where you want this network equipment to sit. Okay, and as you're picking it out and kind of seeing how big it is, maybe it works best if you put it in a rack. Okay, maybe it'll work best just sitting on a shelf. Your situation is going to dictate that, but it's something I want to be a little bit of a takeaway depending on where you are in your process. Okay, guys, so as promised, I want to talk about some of the devices I've used in the past that have served me well, devices I really like. Um, we're even going to be using some of these to set up as part of this video series so you'll get to see them in action a little bit but I wanna to just touch base on each of the kind of different components and talk about some general equipment that served me well. All right, so let's just go over this real quick. The white uh, text is the pros if there are pros and the yellow text are kind of the downsides to each of these pieces of equipment all the way down the list. Okay, so first we have the Cloud Ultra Gateway, 129 bucks, very nice router, um, has, all the security features built in, the controller is built in. It's very affordable at 129 bucks. Um, the downside of this, it can't run the Unify Protect cameras. It is a router network side only. So if you're not doing cameras, you cannot go wrong with this. It's a very, very good device. Its big brother is the UDMSE, 499, so a little bit more expensive, very powerful, built-in controller, full security, also has built-in storage for your camera system. So you can see that big door on there. That's actually to put a hard drive so you can actually record your camera system to this. It becomes your router, your gateway, your NVR, and your controller all in one device for $4.99. So when you look at all of that, it really is a great price um, and it's a good system. So I put a little pricey, but it is full featured. If you're checking off and wanna do all those things, you cannot go wrong with this device. It's really, really nice. Next is the Unify Dream Router. Now, I'll throw this out there. I like the Unify Dream Router. I think it's it, you get decent speeds, built-in controller. You can run multiple things, so you're able to lose the security. Um, it doesn't take a regular hard drive. It takes an SD card, an SSD, like, um, like an SD card for the storage. So it's really meant for smaller camera deployments. I would say one or two cameras maybe would be all you'd want to run. However, at the time of recording this, this device is really hard to get. So I, I almost wonder if Ubiquiti is getting ready to replace it with a new product, um, just because that's kind of been their, their vibe that they do. They make it really hard to get one, they quit making them, everybody barks and complains, and then they come up with a new one and everybody's happy. But right now at the time of recording this, you can't really get your hands on one, but if you do get the opportunity to get one, you wanna just run a couple cameras and run your network, um, Pretty good little device at 199 bucks. They pack a lot of punch. Okay, next let's move over to the switches here. So this is really awesome. You'll notice if you watched my switch video that I pointed to earlier, I did not talk about the 16 Pro Max PoE switch at the top here. They just released this between these videos. This thing is awesome. I mean, it is really a great switch. Um, and at 399, which maybe seems expensive, but you know, it it's packing a lot of power and, and everything into a, a pretty great switch. So it's capable of 10 gigs. So we're talking about future proofing. It has PoE power, PoE++ power. So as the demand for more powerful devices comes into, into the mix, this guy will run them. Uh, and it has this thing called Ethernet, Ether lighting, which is kind of gimmicky, but allows you to kind of light up all your ports, different colors and stuff. So it's kind of cool for the deployments. Um, it is for a smaller deployment. 
like because it only has 16 ports, but for a lot of you, this might check off the boxes. I mean, a lot of you, a 16 port switch um, will work and you don't need to go up to a 24. This thing's really great. Uh, if you do need more ports, I like the standard 24 port PoE. Um, the big difference between this one and the professional series or the enterprise series is this one cannot do 10 gigabit. It maxes out at one gig, but I will say for the normal home, one gig's all you really need, guys. You don't, People get nuts with their specs and they want all this crazy stuff. In general, this thing is going to do what you need it to do. It has PoE Plus, has 16 ports of PoE power, 95 total watts of power, great home switch. Um, probably its limiting factor is if you're using some of the more powerful uh, APs like U7 Pros, you can dip into that 95 watts pretty quick. But in general, great router or great switch. Um, for smaller deployments, I love this USW Ultra 210 watt, 210 watt switch. It's much smaller, 129 bucks, uh, and, and 229. So it has different price points based off how much power you need it to be. There's some flexibility here. You can get a regular power supply that will only deliver a lower power um, amount, or you can buy the bigger power supply and it'll deliver up to 210 watts. So it just kind of depends on what you need. I'm showing the 210 watt one here. Um, great for smaller deployments, adjustable power, which is really awesome. Um, I didn't really see a downside. It is limited to one gig. Um, you would need the pro version to go to 10 gig. Okay. So all good options though. All right. So let's switch over to APs. So the U6 Pro is my favorite, um, Wi-Fi 6 access point. Um, really great, good signal, good speeds, four by four, um, MIMO. Low power requirements, you can power this with a PoE switch. It doesn't even require PoE Plus. So as you start looking at the different kinds of switches, you'll see that the PoE switches are cheaper because they're not delivering as much power. You can actually run this access point. I love it. It's best if you run it, uh, hang it on the ceiling. So this is going to be for ceiling mounted deployments, uh, but a great, great option. I will talk about its U7 Pro, its big brother. Um, also a really good option. It's 179 bucks. I didn't put it on here, but if you want Wi-Fi 7, you don't have to spend a lot more to get it with Ubiquiti, which I really, really like. Um, it's just going to draw more power. The U7 does require more power to operate. Um, okay. So then we have our different kind of form factor here. So we have our U6 in wall, also Wi-Fi 6. They have a U6 enterprise, which is Wi-Fi 6E, which is going to give you that six gigahertz band. So a couple different versions here, but from a Wi-Fi 6 standpoint, great signal, great for retrofitting homes. So what I mean by that is a lot of homes will have Cat5 pulled into them and they have phone jacks that you're no longer using because who has a house phone anymore, right? So you can actually convert those phone jacks into access points and actually mount this wireless access point right into the single gang box that your phone wire was on, plug it into the Cat5, and now you have access points where you had phone jacks. Really, really great option for kind of retrofitting. So it's wall mounted, even comes with a four port gigabit fully managed switch on the bottom, which is really, really cool. So that one cable in the wall now turns into um, four cables that you can plug other devices into off of this access point. Super awesome, love it, great design. Now, um, the U6 mesh, the reason I put it on here, it's great for, um, it has great Wi-Fi signal. It's also outdoor rated. So these actually can be mounted outdoors and they can get wet as long as they're mounted upright. And so they're really great for back decks and things of that nature. So I put them on here because they're typically my go-to for outdoor APs. Although at the time of recording this, the U6 mesh pro has been released or not U6 mesh pro, the U6 um, their outdoor rated AP only went up to Wi-Fi 5 and now they have a Wi-Fi 6 version. So if you really needed a powerful Wi-Fi 6 access point, I would encourage you to look at that. I can't think of the name of it right now. Of course, I'll flash it up here on the screen, but really, really good access points. I like these. They're great for backyard deployments where you're going to have a fire pit or a or pool or something like that. Really, really great. Okay. Let's switch over to cameras here. Now, I like the bullet camera. I'm not a big fan of Ubiquiti's dome cameras. I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, there are a ton of bullet cameras. There's ones with AI built into them. There's 4K version, 2K versions. If you have pretty simple needs and you want a nice camera at a good price point, look at the G4 or G5 bullet, okay? They're 199 or 129 bucks respectively. 
They also have a pro version. The pro version usually gives you a little bit better resolution and stuff like that. It's going to bump up the price into like the $300 range, but still much cheaper than some of the professional systems that you get out there with like access cameras and stuff like that. Um, I really like the G4 and G5 bullet cameras. It's what I use at my house. Really like them. They're great. Um, like I said, there is a pro option if you want to get nicer resolution. And then there's like ones with AI and stuff built into them. But these cameras will do um, car detection, people detection, and animal detection. So when you get alerts, it'll actually tell you what's, what it sees. So there's, there is AI built into them, but just not as refined AI as some of the uh, more crazy AI cameras. I also want to talk about their doorbell. So there's a G4 doorbell, and then there's their G4 doorbell kit, okay? The doorbell by itself, okay, and I want to point this out. This is important. The doorbell by itself is not PoE. It does not require Ethernet. It actually will plug into using your doorbell wires, your standard doorbell wires, and will need to connect wirelessly. It'll connect to Wi-Fi in your home. However, if you're building a home and you want that camera physically connected, okay, then you want to get the G4 kit. And the G4 kit comes with a PoE chime and a PoE G4 door, Pro doorbell. So two different flavors of it, sold different ways. And I just wanted to highlight that here for you guys. So if you're shopping for a doorbell and you only have the wires and you need this thing to connect wirelessly, you do not want to buy the kit. Go ahead and buy the G4 doorbell by itself. And you can buy the chimes by themselves too, and they'll connect wirelessly as well. Last thing I want to touch base on is the network video recorder. We talked about the gateway. The, the UDMSE has a, a hard drive built into it or a space for a hard drive built into it. If you need a more robust camera system, they do make a video, a network video recorder for $299. This does not include your hard drives, but it can you can this is for much larger deployments. The Unify Protect software is built right into this, so you don't have to have another device. You could actually just deploy this with your own mesh system if you wanted to, and this could be your Unified camera system. It doesn't require other Unify products, but it is a really, really nice system. So I wanna just show that to you guys, just to kind of give you that head start, be looking at, you know, stuff I've actually used that can work well for you, um, and hopefully it helps you out. All right, guys, we're almost there. I know this has been a long video, but before we sign off, I wanna just talk about what's upcoming. Let's go over what each of the upcoming videos are. And that way you can kind of maybe figure out where you fit in and which ones to kind of look out for. And that way you kind of know ahead of time. So this first video, again, I know it was long, but it was who's Ubiquity for um, and really the pieces that make up a Ubiquity network. And then what made it longer was my recommendations, but I wanted to give you that starting point, right? Next, we're gonna talk about how to use the Ubiquity store, how to properly research your gear, how to go in, where to find the information you're gonna need so you can put yours together. Like we talked about, there's a lot of pieces of this, so I wanna make sure you are able to actually go to the store and find out this information. Then we're gonna start putting this together, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna start out with how to physically connect your gear together. We're gonna to just touch base. I know I showed you a diagram about how these are all kind of connected, but we're gonna actually start setting it up and physically connect the gear, and I'll, I'll do a little bit deeper dive about the different parts of the equipment. Next, we're gonna set up your VLANs. We're gonna set up some wireless networks. We're gonna actually go in and build your network. So we're gonna get right to the meat and potatoes right away in this, and we'll break down how that's done, and I'll show you exactly how that works. Next, we're gonna talk about your guest network. And I know the guest network and the VLAN one really closely relate to each other, but I wanted to dedicate an entire video to the guest network because Ubiquity has a couple cool things you can do. You can actually have a portal where people sign into your guest network. Um, maybe you're gonna use this for a small business or something. So I wanted to dedicate an entire video to the guest network. Um, if you don't have plan on having a guest network, you can probably skip it. Um, next, we're gonna talk about securing your network. So this is gonna be all about firewall rules. We're gonna take those networks we built and we are going to build firewall rules around them. So we're gonna have a camera VLAN, we're gonna have an IoT VLAN, we're gonna have the guest network, we're gonna have all these things and then we're gonna secure this with firewall rules and it's gonna be very easy to follow step by step and it will give you a really nice blueprint for getting started and putting together your network, okay? So you can copy all of this if you want to, no big deal. I promise I won't take offense to it. After that, we're gonna get into the camera side. So we're gonna talk about the Unify Protect 
and getting your cameras and your NVR online. So what all the pieces of that. And then we're gonna set up your NVR, motion zones, notifications, how to view your recordings, how to use the system. So for those last two, if you're not planning on doing any cameras, then you know, you might not have, to, you might be able to skip that, okay? But I wanna make sure we touch base on it because um, there's a lot of you out there who like the idea of being able to incorporate security cameras right into your network and see it all on the same um, app and everything. So, or I guess different app, but the same devices are, are creating all this. So we're gonna do some camera stuff at the end. So I hope this helps you guys. I'm looking forward to working with you on this. Um, make sure you look through the series and um, I've made all the uh, thumbnails the same so you can kind of find your way around and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.